Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and let's give God some glory. Amen. Hallelujah. God is great and he is greatly to be praised. We magnify him all today. Amen. 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 We're going to bring before you our praise and worship team. But before that, I have a few announcements. Uh, on today at 5 p.m., uh, we will not be having Zoom as we usually do uh, for our second service. We will not be on Zoom. Uh, I have an engagement out with World Changers International Ministries, amen, uh, for a women's conference, which is with Pastor Darlene Hobson, amen. But we will be streaming this live, amen. So you can you can look at it on our Facebook page, go up to our Facebook page, Salara. Facebook page at five, and we will stream it live, amen, right from Pastor Hobson's uh, our page as well. We will stream it live, all right? So you can go to Solid Rock's Facebook page, and you'll still be able to uh, be in service with us on today, all right? At this time, we're going to have our praise and worship team to give us a selection. No praise is 
Jesus, we come before you. Just want to say thank you, oh God, for what you have done and that that you shall do and what you're currently doing right now. We ask that you will extend your hand toward the people right now. Deliver, oh God. Strengthen right now. Heal right now. By oppression and depression, let your glory be revealed in the lives of your people. Manifest yourself in a mighty and a powerful way, Lord. Use your vessel according to your perfect will. Let your glory be in this place and over these airways. We ask it now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Lord. Amen. The book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk, the second chapter. We're going to read verses 1 through 3. Hallelujah. And the Bible said, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read of it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, 
wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Amen. Before I go into chapter 2, I just want to give you a little background so we'll know uh, where Habakkuk is coming from and why he's talking the way he's talking, uh, that he's going to go and stand upon his watch and, and he's going to watch to see what the Lord is going to say to him and, uh, and, and how he will answer him when he is reproved. We need to know what he's talking about and why would God be reproving him. Amen. So if, you know, I'm going to take you back to chapter 1. In chapter 1, Habakkuk kind of complains to the Lord. Amen. He complains to the Lord about how a heathen nation has invaded, amen, Israel, and basically how they are doing toward them, how they have besieged the cities, and how violence is in the land, and things are going on that should not be going on, amen, amongst the people, and amen, people are not doing the right things, and righteous judgment Amen is not in the land uh, and how God has an all seeing eye and he sees all these things but it looks like yes. Yes. God is doing nothing. Yes. Oh. Ah, looks a little bit like our time. Yes, it does. Looks a little bit like our time. Uh, how we're seeing evil seeming to prevail yes. in our own country. Things that were a no-no is now a yes-yes. Yes, yes. We see things on TV that we've never seen on television before. People used to be modest back in the day. Yes. They used to be modest. They used to be respectful. Some things they wouldn't put on television where every eye could be whole. Yeah. But now we see people uncovering more on television. I'm talking about just television. Yeah. Than we've ever seen. We see so much wickedness. We see so many people jumping in and out of the bed together. Mm. We see things that that children should never be exposed to right on regular television. Mm. We see people seemingly going places while they're in a bed setting. Going places that children definitely should never behold. Things that they should have marked as rated R. Mm -hmm. It's not PG, but it's on regular TV. That's right. Ah, the world is becoming wickeder and more wicked. Yes. It is worse now than we've ever seen it before. Amen. That's true. I'm talking about us that's here existing today. I can't speak for those that have gone on a long, long time ago. Because history seems to repeat itself. Yes. And we are seeing some things that uh, come out of the closet that used to be in the closet. That's right. And now it's so out of the closet that it's everywhere. It's on the TV. It's on the radio. It's in the movie. It's almost in every show you watch. Yeah, that's right. Unless you're watching a Christian-based show. Yeah. It's just slipped in there somehow in some way. It's like, this don't even fit. It doesn't even belong here. But they put it in there because they want to bring to it. Mm -hmm. And they want you to see it so much that it no longer seems to be abnormal. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm just simply talking about how God would have things to be. Yeah. We have gone so far from the way God would have things to be that you look at the world today and you wonder if we've ever known God. Yeah. 
because we are constantly turning away from him as a nation. Mm. We've even had one president to say that this is not a Christian country. Mm. After all these years that this country supposed to be on the foundation of Christianity. Yeah. Mm. We had a president to come in and say that it is not a Christian country. This is the same president, yes, that we was happy to vote in because sometimes we want to vote somebody in because guess what? They seem to be like us. They look like us, then we gravitate toward them. They say good things, we gravitate toward them. Oh, I'm not just talking about everybody else, I'm talking about me too. I sold the paraphernalia. Oh, with that face on it. Face on this, face on that. Oh, yes! Let's vote for them. Hallelujah. Says some good things and it seemed to tickle our ear. And a lot of people tickle our ears, but they don't do what they say after they get to the place. And I'm not saying that he didn't do good things because he did do good things and I won't take those good things away from him. But! There were some things that we did not allow yeah. that were not godly yeah. that he started allowing and he promoted. See, it's about the sin. The Bible says that sin is a reproach yeah. to any people. Yeah. Righteousness is that what exalts a nation. Yeah. And we wonder why we're going further down and further down because sin is a reproach to any nation. And I know people want to say that the Bible is outdated. No, I come to tell you it's right on time. Yes. Ah, the Bible is right on time. And why and how could you say that, Pastor? I say that to you because the Bible told us what was going to happen in the last days. And it is fulfilling itself right in front of our faces. It's right on time. It may be an ancient book, but it is a book that keeps up with the times because it relates to the past, the present, and the future that is to come. God is wiser than any man. Yeah. Ah. Who could go back in the past and tell you what happened before you got here? Who could come in your present and tell you what's going on right now amongst you. And then who could go foresee into your future and tell you what's going to happen in the end to come? Yeah. Nobody but God. Nobody. But yet, what they call an ancient book have already written their life story. See, it is no secret about what's going on. He said it would go on. So we really are not to be surprised because he already said it would happen. Yeah. He said it would be like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah when the Son of Man would return. Oh, we hit it there. We hit it there. We hit it there. We are corrupting the minds of our children. Because the enemy understands if I get them while they're young, yeah. I can turn the whole country around. Yeah. I got to get the young because the young will take the place of the older. And if I can get the young to believe that they're not a boy and they're not a girl, there is no male, there is no female, there is no gender, you are just existing as a human being, then they will not question identity. Yes, yes. Right. 
Because they don't know who they really are. See, that's the thing that the enemy wants to do, is to take away your identity. That is one of the first things that they used to do when they took you into captivity. And when they brought us over here as slaves, they changed our names to take away your identity. And when the devil wants to enslave a person, he wants them to lose their identity. My God. But somebody got to fight for what's right. Yes, yes. You got to know who you are. Yes. And those of us that know some of our history as colored people. And if you watch Roots, I think you might have stopped playing that because of what was going on when people saw it. You know, sometimes people don't want you to know your roots. Yeah, they don't want you to know your history. They don't want you to know your background. They don't want you to know who you really are. Yeah, right. So if I don't want you to know who you really are, then I won't show you about nobody that was before you. I won't let you know where you came from. Yeah. Because I want to erase your pain. And that was one of the things that Nebuchadnezzar did when he conquered the children of Israel. And he took them over to the land of Babylon. One of the first things he did was change their name to the names of his gods. Woo! And there's a I'm nobody demon out there that wants to tell our children that you are nobody. And that you are nothing, huh? that you have no identity. Huh? But the devil is a liar. There is identity. God proclaims you to be a male and a female. And that is your identity. What you were born with is what you are. Yeah. Yeah. It is nothing about how you feel. Your feelings has nothing to do with your biology the way God made you. I'm just telling the truth. I, I hope everybody not mad about the truth. But the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And I'm definitely not bashing anybody. I'm not bashing anybody. Amen. I'm not bashing anybody. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But we got to call sin what it is. It is sin. Lying is sin. Whoremonging is sin. Backbiting is sin. Jealousy, hatred, all kinds of evil. It's sin. It's sin. And we got to put sin where it belongs. I didn't say the sinner. I said sin. Because God loves the sinner. We love the sinner. Amen. But he hates the sinner. Mm -hmm. My God. It's just like if your child was to go out here and commit murder. You would still love your child. Right. But you would hate what they did. You can't agree with what they did because you love the child. You got to hate what they did but love the child. Yes. 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 So yes, you can't separate it. My God, you can separate it. But now what we want to do is we want to put it in a different category. Mm -hmm. Define things in a different light. And so, so much wickedness is going on. And so much murder is in the land. And we are killing ourselves. Genocide. It's not just about one sin. We are killing ourselves. Our young men are killing our young men in the streets on a daily basis. Yeah, that's right. But yet, and there's nothing wrong with it. We march in the streets and we want the police not to get the monies that they're supposed to get. Which will ultimately leave us more defenseless. Defund the police. That's not the answer. We need to march against each other and tell each other it is time to get together with unity and love one another. Stop killing each other in the streets. It's wicked. We don't even love our own brother enough not to kill him. When you see him, you see yourself. Yeah. He is you. Yeah. 
I'm still preaching. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Because this is the stuff that Habakkuk was looking at. People getting killed in the street. Murder, dishonesty, judgment in the courthouse. It's turned upside down. Saying wrong things, making wrong right, and right is wrong. That's what's happening today. And I understand he was frustrated because God was watching it, but it seemed like he was doing nothing. And sometimes we wonder why is nothing happening about this situation? It's getting worse instead of better. And we're praying. Yes, yes, my God. Oh, but God wants somebody to know it is not because I don't hear you. I do hear you. But I try to show this world something. Yes. They don't want me. But without me, I want them to see how it will be. Yes. Yes. It's only a small taste of how the world would be without God in it. It would be worse if the body of Christ was no longer here. And I come to tell somebody that it's going to get worse while we are here. But much, much worse when we leave. I'm not wishing it, but truth is just truth. Fact is just fact. See, it's not how people want you to do things. Ah, uh -huh. truth. You have your truth and I have my truth. No, truth is just fact. Amen. Amen. It's reality. It's not what you make. It's not what you want and what you don't want. It absolutely has nothing to do with that. Oh, it's irrelevant. No, it is relevant. The word of God is relevant. And it's time that we wake up to the word of God and realize that it is relevant to today. Yeah. <sighs> We're talking about a God of eternity. But we want to box him into our time. You're still trying to figure him out, but he knew you because he created you. He knew you before you were born. Yes, yes. As he told Jeremiah, I knew you before you were formed in the belly. I knew you. I ordained you. I already designated for you to be who I wanted you to be. So it's understandable how Habakkuk, he was grieved in the spirit because sometimes when I look around at the world, I get grieved in my spirit. But I thank God that he lifts it out of my spirit because it would be unbearable. It would be unbearable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really would be unbearable. It vexes your spirit being to watch all the evil going in and on in the world and you can't fix it all. You can try to fix as much as you can and you should, but you as one person cannot fix it all. Yes, yes. People are being raped. Children are being molested. People are being sold as property. Trafficking is going on. These young people are being taken from one place to another place and having being made to have sex with people that they should not have to have it with. Taken away from their parents. And then some of the parents are literally selling their children into this. Jesus. So that they can have money. It's a wicked world. And a was was experiencing a wicked world. And it was really getting to him. And he was talking to God and saying, why are you not doing anything? Yeah. Like some people... They go so far and they wonder why is God letting all this happen? Well, the fact of the matter is it wouldn't happen. God is not the one that's doing it. Look around and see who's doing it. And then you ask the question again, why is this happening? It's happening because mankind is wicked. Yeah. It is not God's doing. It is our doing. Because we are choosing not to follow the will of God in any other way is going to take us into what we have now. Yes, yes. But this is what happens when you don't.
don't want God. Evil will prevail when you don't want God. Our bishop just preached in our convocation. He was talking about confusion. And the spirit of confusion is definitely in this land. I'll be looking and you can almost scratch your head at some of the some of the things that they come up with. You be like, what in the world? Yes, mm-hmm. yes, mm-hmm. yes. Preaching. Mm-hmm. Right? Jesus, help us. This don't make no sense in no kind of way. Yeah. How did they even make that decision? And you just look at it like, I don't, I, I, I can't even see how, how they didn't see. Because the spirit of confusion is in the land. God will let you be confused and confounded because you don't want right. And when you don't want right, he going to see to it that you get wrong. I'm just speaking truth. And everybody don't want to hear the truth. But that's what I'm called to do. I'm called to proclaim the truth of the word of God. Because God loves us too much not to want to help us. Yes, yes. But he will not force himself upon us. We don't want to have accountability to God. But it's something when things go wrong that everybody starts saying, let's pray. Why are we going to pray after the fact when we could have avoided it if we had only followed the ways of God? So it was a wicked time. And he was upset. And he carried his complaint to the Lord. And he was like, well, you see all of this, but you ain't doing nothing about it. Why are you not doing anything about it? So he said, now, I am going to stand upon my watch. Watchmen are supposed to stand on their watch. They're supposed to stand guard. They're supposed to look out on the land. And I'm going to set me up on the tower, up in the high place. And I'm going to watch to see what he shall say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Because I want to know what God's going to have to say about this. Because I mean, you God and you are God. You let all this stuff happen to us. Why? Because Israel was sinning against God. And let me tell you, any nation that turns their back on God is going to receive the devil. And what comes with the devil? If you don't want God, then don't expect all his blessings to flow and flow and flow in your house. Yet he is still blessing while you are going through what the devil is taking you through because you didn't obey God. If you're still here, you're still blessed. Yes. God is still giving you a time and an opportunity, a chance yes. to repent. Repent. Yes. Turn from your wicked ways. Turn from your sins. Repent. Start afresh. Start anew. Let this be a new day for you. If nobody else change, you change. Because yes. you got your own soul. And you're going to stand before God by yourself and give an account for the deeds that you've done in the body. Nobody's going there with you. Nobody's going to stand in the judgment seat with you. Not mama, not daddy, not friend, not husband, not cousin. So when you stand before the Lord and say, well, I did it because they they did that. And I I didn't want to change because, you know, I didn't want them to be upset with me. All right, well, you got your own soul. And when you choose somebody over God, then you choose to go to the place that's burning. Amen. Heaven is real, but so is hell. People love it when you talk about heaven. Oh, we're going to heaven. But I come to tell you that heaven. But a whole lot of bodies are going to hell. And unfortunately, more is going to hell than are going to heaven. Why? Because this is a straight and a narrow way. And few there be that find it. But Broadway is wide open. Where you do what you want to do, how you want to do it, say what you want to say, how you want to say it. Go where you want to go, when you want to go. Broadway is wide open. And 
He's talking. And the Lord answers him. Uh huh. The Lord answers him because he's vexed. But God is letting him know listen, I'm letting it go on for a purpose. And God lets him know that I'm not going to let it keep being this way. But it will be this way for a while longer. And ha, the Lord says unto him, ha, I want you to write the vision ha, that I'm giving unto you. Ha, and I want you to make the vision plain upon tables. Ha. See, what they would do ha, is they'd engrave or carve things. Ha, amen to big pieces ha, of wood or something like that. Ha, and they'd take the plackets and hang them up. Ha, he had to write it on the table ha, that he may run that read of it. Ha, for ha, though the vision tarry, ha, for the yet for a point in time, ha, I gotta stop right there, ha, cause I didn't even give you my text, ha, it is in a point in time, ha, in a point in time, ha, Lord have mercy, ha, I come to tell you, ha, that we might want God, ha, to come yesterday, ha, but that was not the appointed time, ha, oh Lord, ha, I'm looking at this COVID situation, ha, a man that's been in our land, ha, going on two, four years, ha, a man, and we've been praying, ha, and fasting, ha, and calling, ha, on the name of the Lord, ha, a man, doctors been working, ha, scientists been working, ha, trying to figure out, ha, how to get rid of this thing, ha, but I come to tell you, ha, that God has an appointed time. Ha. Yes, he does. Ha. He sees ha. everything that's happening. Ha. And when it seemed like ha, it was going down, ha. now it comes in ha. at seven ha. And it's more than one billion. Ha. According to what they say, ha. a billion ha. have now started spreading. Ha. Spreading throughout the land ha. and spreading to the countries. Ha. And people are getting sick all over again. Ha. Oh Lord, ha, somebody might say, ha, well, ha, have you not stopped this thing? Ha, I know, ha, I'm running in the stopping, ha, but I, ha, I also know, ha, that God has, ha, an appointed time, ha, that he's gonna wipe COVID, ha, away from here, ha, but it's a set time, ha, it's in his own time, ha, he's trying to get people to see, ha, that they need, the call on him, ha, and me have, ha, still not called, ha, on the one, ha, that is able, ha, to bring them out, ha, somebody, ha, ought to realize, ha, when plagues get released, ha, in this earth, ha, nobody, ha, can really stop him, ha, but God, ha, and if you try, ha, and if you get knowledge, ha, that you stop one, ha, he'll send another one, ha, and another one, ha, and another one, ha, and another one, ha, trying to get your attention, ha, so you can turn, ha, and repent. Yes, glory. In a point in time, it has an appointed time, and God is telling him, I want you to write the vision. I want you to make it plain, ha. Oh, Lord, ha. For yet, ha, an appointed time, ha. But at the end, ha, it shall speak, ha. What it was left in not loud, ha. He said, though it tarry, ha. In other words, ha, it's not going in, ha. What y'all going through right now, ha. It ain't over, ha. Somebody said, ha. Tell God said, ha, that it's over, ha. And for somebody out there, ha, it's almost over for you, ha. Oh, yes, it is, ha. You've been waiting on God, ha, for a long time, ha. In your situation, ha, in your predicament, ha. You've been talking to God, ha, not understanding, ha, why you had to go through, ha, what you've been going through, ha. But I come to tell you, ha, that there is good news, ha. God, ha, has an appointed time, ha, and he's going to bring you out, ha. Just hang on in there, ha. Keep on running, ha. Don't stop running the race, ha. Don't throw in the towel, ha. Your appointed time, ha, is right around the corner, ha. So hold on, ha, and don't give up, ha. He that will come, ha, he shall come, ha, and he will not tarry, ha. Lord, ha, is on his way, ha, with your deliverance, ha, in his hand, ha. He's moving, ha, in 
the wind and he's sending your answer to your prayer. Your deliverance is coming. Hold, hold on to God. Unchanging hand. He won't change. He a God that doesn't change from everlasting to everlasting. He is, he was, and will be God. In a point in time, in a point in time, and the Lord said, but at the end it shall speak and it shall not lie, though it tarry. I'm telling y'all to wait for it, because when I speak a thing, ha, it shall be, ha, have I spoken it, ha, and shall I not bring it to pass? Ha, I come to tell you, ha, I don't care ha, how many the devil sin ha, against you, ha, how many demonic spirits ha, attack your life. Ha, when God has spoken ha, a word for your life, ha, it shall come to pass. Ha, it shall be done, ha, because God ha, has spoken it. Ha, he's not a man ha, that he should lie. Ha, nor the son of man ha, that he should repent. Ha, he will ha, make it good. Ha, but you gotta believe him. Ha, you gotta have faith. Ha, faith ha, is the substance ha, of things hoped for. Ha, the evidence ha, of things not seen. Ha, by it, ha, the Bible said, ha, the elders ha, received ha, a good report. Ha, you gotta hold on ha, to your faith. Ha, the church shall live ha, by their faith. Ha. It's also ha, a part of the scriptures ha, in Habakkuk. Ha. You gotta have faith ha, for change. Ha. I know it look like ha, it's getting worse. Ha. But if God ha, said a change is coming, ha, then a change is coming. Ha. You didn't see it yesterday. Ha. You didn't see it last week. Ha. You didn't see it last year. Ha. But a change ha, is coming. In an appointed time, Glory. the Lord said, because it will show come. It's going to happen. I gave you the vision, so it's going to definitely happen. It will not turn. Nothing is going to stop it from happening. Now, yes, when we looked at one part, you saw what God said. Though it turned. All right? Because what he was saying is, it's not going to happen yet. Yes. But then he got down to the place where he said, it will surely come. It will not turn. Nothing's going to stop it from happening. Mm -hmm. It is going to happen. Yes. But it's going to happen in the appointed time. Yes. God is the timekeeper. Some things God don't give us when we want him to give it to us because he knows that things will not turn out if he give it to you right now. He know you're going to waste it. Excuse me. He know you don't have enough knowledge. See, so you got people were asking for certain financial blessings. Oh, Lord. If you give me a million dollars. Oh, Jesus. And God is saying, you don't even know how to handle the little bit that I give you now. You don't even know how to budget the little bit that I give you now. Oh, no. See, to whom much is given, much is required. So before I give you that, even though I've spoken it into your life, until you learn how to treat money, don't expect me to make you a millionaire. Yes, yes. Woo. Right now, the vision is tearing in your life. <laughs> it's not coming yet because you're not ready for it yet. Uh huh. You haven't straightened up and got yourself in order yet. And that's why it's not coming yet. And some people say, well, I, I, I want to get married. I want a husband or I want a wife. And you wonder why everybody getting married and you're not getting married. And God said, because you ain't ready for the husband yet. You're not ready for the wife yet. You got to get yourself together before I give you a husband or before I give you a wife. Because some people God give a husband or wife too. They're going to make a head back out of that situation. Amen. They're not going to do what they're supposed to do. And God has said, no, that's not how I want your life to be. That's not what I'm trying to put in your life because you ain't ready 
for it. You understand what I'm saying? Some people, you got an attitude problem, and y'all going to be duking it out, even if you are saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. You're going to be fist fighting somebody and cussing somebody out. And God already know your temperament. He know you don't know how to hold your tongue yet. You haven't overcome your mouth yet. And that's why he said, no, I'm going to let you wait a little bit while I'm long, God. Uh-huh, because you ain't, you ain't learned nothing yet, and I got to help you out. You understand what I'm saying? I got to help you out. I got to help you out. No, I'm not going to make you no boss yet. No, I'm not going to make you no boss. I am going to make you one, but I'm not going to make you no boss yet. Why? Because you don't know how to treat people. You don't know how to treat people. No, you don't know how to treat people. You know how to deal with other people's attitudes without you getting one too. And that's why I'm not making you no boss yet. But I am going to make you a boss. Well, Lord, you said you was going to do this. You was going to open up the door. You was going to make the way. And you was going to let them promote me. And God said, I did say that. And I did not lie. I'm still going to do it, but I'm not doing it yet because you need to Time, wait, the vision is time. Yes, yes. Sometimes things are ready for us, but we just ain't ready for it. Mm. It's true. Sometimes things are waiting on us, but we ain't ready for it yet. Mm -hmm. It's waiting on you, but you ain't ready. You ain't ready. But when you get ready, then the vision will appear. And then you're going to see the mighty hand of God move in your life. And see, these people wanted to be out from under this pressure, but they weren't right. They weren't doing what they were supposed to. And so God used the heathen nation uh, to chastise them. Uh, but God said, look what I'm going to do. is I'm going to turn this thing all the way around. Uh, I'm going to send uh, another nation uh, after that nation, uh, after what they did to you. Uh, and I'm going to punish them. Uh, but I'm going to raise you up. Uh, I'm going to bless you. Uh, I'm going to bring you out. Uh, that is the vision. Uh, to look uh, toward God. Uh, delivering you uh, and bringing you out. Uh, because God uh, has an everlasting But he want to see some changes first. He want to see some changes first. Our praise and worship team is about to come. He want to see some changes first. See, let me tell you, they was looking for a Messiah to come. But when Jesus showed up on the scene, or they was looking for a king, and Jesus showed up on the scene, and they thought that he was the king, and how they thought the Roman government was going to be overthrown. But he didn't come at that time to overthrow any other government. That was not his purpose at that time. There was a vision. That was a vision and still is a vision. And they still waiting on the vision because the vision shall come and it will not tarry. But it had to tarry for a while because they weren't ready for it. They weren't ready. They wasn't ready. Jesus came to die for the sins of the world, but they thought he was coming to take over. But that wasn't what he was coming to do. And yes, he was the king of kings. And yes, he was the Lord of lords. And I can imagine that's why Peter pulled out the sword even after he had told Jesus when Jesus said he had to go and die. And he said, be that far from you. And Jesus had to look to him and say, get behind me, Satan. For thou savest not the things that be of God. Jesus knew what his purpose was. And even though there was a vision that was set forth that one day he would come and reign on the throne of David, that wasn't the time. God does things in his own time. Not in yours and not in mine. Because he knows the right time. Amen. But I tell you what is the right time. Right now is the right time for you to come to Jesus. Yes. This is the right time for you to come to Jesus. Don't let the song come true for you that they say, don't let it be said. Too late, too late to enter God's golden gates. Don't let it be said too late. And don't wait to go to church the time that they roll you into the church while you're in a coffin. That's going to be too late. That's going to be too late. God has appointed your day of salvation. And this is the day of salvation. Yeah. And it is high time that we 
wake up out of our sleep and realize the darkness that's in this world and God is not going to let it remain this way. There is an appointed time when it shall be light. Yes. It shall be light. Yes. At this time, the praise and worship team is coming. We're going to ask that you will go to your cash app or your giving for I. Amen. To be a blessing unto the ministry. I just said what God would have me to say. Not trying to be offensive, but to give you the word because God loves you. And when you really love somebody, you tell them the truth. Even if it hurt, you'll tell them the truth. If it's going to save their life, you'll tell them the truth. If they're doing something that's detrimental to their health, you would tell them the truth. Even if they didn't speak to you anymore. But because of your love for them, you would tell them the truth. Today you've heard the truth. Because God loves you. And so does I. Do I. We love you today. And we don't want you to perish. We don't want you to go to a Christless grave. We don't want you to go to hell. The truth has been spoken. Praise and worship to me. God love you. I cheer for giving. Come on, wherever you are, go ahead and clap your hands. Oh, 
God like Jehovah. There's no 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 God like Jehovah. continue to give, amen, and be a blessing to the ministry. We pray that God has given you, amen, a word for today, amen, and that you have heeded the voice of the Lord on this morning or afternoon, amen. We want you to know that we love you, but God loves you best. Be encouraged, be encouraged. It will happen in God's appointed time, amen.